طيب دلوقتي شايفين ايه على الشاشه؟ شايفين شيت تمام الشيت ده بيبين اللي احنا عملناه من ساعة ما ابتدينا الكورس لغاية النهاردة اللي انا معلم عليه بالمستطيل الأخضر فاحنا خدنا 11 lectures نتيجة كان عندنا اسبوعين فيهم اجازة اسبوع ميت ترم واسبوع عيد فخليناه سيلف ستاري اللي هو بين قوسين ده كان في كالشر سنتر ده من, من اليوتيوب وكان في الووتر اند سانيتيشن محاضرة والكلايمت تشينج محاضرة مع المحاضر نفسه وكان في مع المحاضر محاضرة بتاعة السانيتيشن تو فيديوز واحدة من المحاضر مدتها بسيطة نص ساعة أو حاجة زي كده واحدة تانية موجودة على اليوتيوب وخلينا الأجريكالشر برضو سيلف ستاديو ده موجود على اليوتيوب النهاردة هناخد المحاضرة بتاعت النايل بيزن وهي برضو ريكوردد ليكتشر محاضرة جميلة أوي هتعجبكم بتتكلم على حوض النيل بعد كده الأسبوع الجاي هيبقى في محاضرة عن الانفيرومنت والمشاكل البيئة نظرا لأهمية الموضوع ده وبعدين هنشوف بقى هل أنتم هتقدروا تاخدوا محاضرة يوم 29 ولا الامتحانات هتبتدي يوم 29 حد يرد عليا يا جماعة هلو هو الامتحان يوم اتنين ستة يا دكتور الامتحان مادة سيلكت الطوبي هو اتنين ستة يا دكتور في في امتحانات يوم تمانية وعشرين ويوم تسعة وعشرين ما هو عشان هو ده اللي انا بساله عشان كده انا كاتب هنا اهو ده هيبقى فاينل اكزام يعني ما فيش محاضره يوم 29 ده كان سؤالي ما حدش رد عليا صح مظبوط اه وهنخلي المحاضره بتاعه يوم 22 يعني زي ما تقول جنرال ديسكشن لان معظم يمكن في بعض الطلبه يكونوا بيذاكروا او عندهم بلانز وبالتالي اللي هنمتحن فيه هم ال 13 محاضره دول يا رب كده أكون جاوبت على السؤال اللي جالي في الـ في التيمز من أحد الزملاء كان عايز يعرف إحنا عملنا إيه المحاضرات اللي علينا. آه الكويس بقى نمرة ستة ده أنا لغيته اللي هو بتاع الليكشر 11 و12 عشان برضو هيبقى قريب إلا لو عايزين كويس تاني ما عنديش مانع. نعمل كويس يوم 15 مايو بس كده هيبقى قريبين من بعض لأن الكويس الجاي يوم الخميس. فعشان كده أنا هكتفي بالإيه؟ بالخمسة كويزز دول تمام يا شباب؟ اه دكتور ايوه مش هي اسئلة الكويزات دي بتبقى مهمة بالنسبة للفاينل وكده؟ اه طب ويا ريت حضرتك لو كده تعمل لنا الكويز السادس يعني يبقى افيد لينا على الأقل لا بس ده هيبقى هيبقى الفرق بين الكويزين كتير لو انتوا رأيكم كده انا ما عنديش مانع ده سهل جدا عليا انتوا بصوا بصوا كده كده هنكون بنذاكر للفاينل طيب قرروا وردوا عليا عايزين كويز هنا اهو ما عنديش مانع خالص لو انتوا عايزين كده ده هيبقى كام بقى؟ تعالوا نحدد ميعاده هيبقى سيرش داي كام؟ اهو ما عنديش مشكله خالص اهو سيرش داي مايو كام بقى؟ هيبقى مايو مايو 12 وكمان سبعة ايام مايو 19 ايه رايكم؟ ما عنديش مانع اهو هو يبقى احسن لينا الكويز السادس احسن نعم الكويز السادس هيكون احسن لينا اه خلاص طالما انتم متفقين على كده اي دونت مايند يا سلام عينيا الاثنين بس كده ثانك يو تمام دلوقتي اف يو دونت هاف اني كويشنز اباوت احنا خدنا ايه وما خدناش ايه وليه العلامات الصفراء وليه العلامات الحمراء وي كان جو رايت اواي تو ذا ليكشر ايه رايكم؟ هو هو اكيد اوكي بس هو ليه فعلا ليه يعني احمر ليه في احمر هقول لك ليه في احمر اتفضل الاحمر الاولاني ده لان المحاضره دي ما كانتش موجوده السنه اللي فاتت تمام سو ذس از ادد يعني بالظبط برافو عليك وانا حطيتها ليه عشان اساعدك في انك انت تختار البروجكت بتاعك لان كان بيقول احنا ايه البروجكت اللي هم عددهم في الموقع بتاع الحكومه حوالي 5400 
لكن اللي احنا اللي موجودين في المحاضره دي حوالي 44 تمام فكنت الغرض من ال... من ال... من المحاضره الجديده دي ان احنا نعرفكم الحاجات عشان تختاروا تعملوا مشروعات الكورس ريبورت الاحمر ده والاحمر ده عشان دول تو نيو سبيكرز ما كان يعني ومش بس نيو سبيكرز ده كان له سبيكرز موجودين ما كنا سامعين التسجيل بتاعه وان ووتر اند سانيتيشن تو فيديوز واحد كان فيه السبيكر والتاني نفس الموضوع انا اللي مسجله والاثنين علينا تقريبا هم بيتكلموا على نفس الشيء فيش اختلاف كبير قوي بين تمام يا دكتور كده كده وضحت لكم طيب واللي بالاصفر ليه عاملين اصفر ها عشان اصفر ده سيفتي عشان كان في اجازه مره 100 ترم اكزام ومره كان العيد تمام يا شباب هل في اي استفسارات تانية؟ لا خلاص ثانك يو سو ماتش دكتور هو كده الكويزات حتى بعد ما تبقى ستة هتفضل برضو ثلاثة بس لا يتحط عليهم الجريد مظبوط لا لا لو عملنا ستة هاخد احسن اربعة طب ما هو ده هيبقى مشكلة للفرق الكبيرة ان هم هيبقوا مضغوطين في المشاريع في الوقت ده الوقت انا مش عارف انتوا عايزين ايه بالظبط لو عايزين كويز وما انا بدي كويز كده من غير ما اعمل عليه ايفالويشن ازاي يعني لا مش قصدي حاجه مش قصدي يعني انتوا انتوا تاخد هو ولا هو انتوا هو انتوا هتخشوا الكويز ده اللي جاي ده من غير ما تذاكروا يعني على حسب هو الفكره ان الفرق الكبيره هتبقى مضغوطه جامد يعني متوقع ان الدرجات دي مش, مش موافق على مش موافق على الفكره بتاعتك دي أنا أعتقد إن إحنا ناخد أربعة من ستة يبقى فير وإن والكويز السادس زي زميلتك ما قالت مفيد لينا عشان هنكون بنذاكر وقريبين من آخر السنة فالقرار إن هو هيبقى في سكس في كويز نمبر سكس وهناخد أربعة من ستة دكتور بس هو الفكرة إن إحنا كدفعات كبيرة فيها أوريدي في كذا كويز يعني إحنا عندنا تقريبا ثلاث أربع كويزات أو خمس كويزات كمان حوالين نفس الميعاد قبلها وبعدها ده غير تسليمات المشاريع هم عشان ثانية واحدة لما أنت مشغول عايز كويز ليه؟ طب ما ما تقولوا بلاش نمرة ستة أنا مستغرب ما هو كلامك فيه بخلاص طب ما هرد على حضرتك هو الفكرة كلها إن إحنا أولاً فرق لا مختلفة. الفكرة التفاوضية اللي أنت بتعملها معايا دي أي دونت أكسبت إت أوكي؟ لو حد تاني يعني عنده طب هي دي هي ده قراري لو مش عاجبك ما تاخدوش وخليك تاخد ثلاثة من خمسة عادي كويس زي زمان زي قبل كده. ما هي دي فرصة كويسة برضه. مش نفس الحكاية؟ هو أنا مش فاهم أيوة. هو بس قصده إن يعني إن القرار ده يعني اتنين بس أو ثلاثة اللي قالوا مش كل الدفعة ممكن لا نعمل فوت مثلا. لا 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 لو اتنين بس أو ثلاثة اللي قالوا يبقى مفيش كويس يا ابني. هو ايه ايوه هو بالظبط احنا ممكن نعمل فوت مثلا ونشوف في نتيجه الفوت هتوصلنا لايه مش اكتر بس خلاص لو سمحت يا جوليا تعملي فوت وتبلغيني بيه قبل الميعاد اللي مكتوب في البروجرام ده اللي هو ميعاد 100 19 لو كلكم مش عايزين هنلغيه لو لو الغالبيه عايزين فعلا الفكره دي جميله وانا موافق عليها خلاص يا باشمهندس ايه رايك؟ تمام يا شباب؟ اكيد يا دكتور حضرتك شايف احسن انا بس بقول لحضرتك انا بص 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 انا بتناقش معاكم وبعدين لما حد يقول لي فكره يعني مش منطقيه ومش كويسه اوافق عليها ليه؟ اكيد مفهوم انا هو وصلنا الحل اهو ان احنا هنعمل فوت ولو كلكم عاوزين الكويز السادس عنايه الاثنين ويبقى اربعه من سته مش عايزين الكويز السادس يبقى خمسه كويز وثلاثه من خمسه ايه المشكله؟ طب دكتور انا عندي اتفضلي هو سادس از ا بونص نعم لا 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 ممكن يبقى بونص لا 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 اجابه السؤال ده نو اوكي كويز يعني كويز مش بونص ها طيب انت هتعملي دكتور لطفي هتعملي البول ده على انه مش كويز مش مش بونص على انه لو خدناه يبقى اربعه من سته مش عايزينه يبقى خمسة وناخد ثلاثة من خمسة زي ما كنا ماشيين. تمام. في حد عنده دكتور لو سمحت. أنا كان عندي سؤال في محاضرة المية وكنت عايز أسأل حضرتك يوم الـ يوم الأحد الصبح ساعة المحاضرة بس ما كانش في محاضرة فممكن أسأل عليه دلوقتي؟ 
اه طبعا ممكن جدا فيري جود تايمنج اتفضل يا بشوي هو يا دكتور في مؤتمر بيتعمل كل سا... مؤتمرين مؤتمر بيتعمل كل سنه في مصر ومؤتمر بيتعمل مره واحده بيتعمل كل كل سنه بس مره في مره في كل دوله فده اسمه ده اسمه ايه اه لا لا ده هو اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه ده ده اسمه المؤتمرين الكبار اللي احنا بنتكلم عليهم دول بيحصلوا كل سنه خلاص تمام مؤتمر اللي هو بيحصل في مصر اسمه كايرو ووتر ويك وده بيبقى في اكتوبر تقريبا وده بيحصل كل سنه والمؤتمر الثاني اللي هو الكوب السنه اللي فاتت كان في اسكتلندا والسنه دي في مصر والسنه الجايه في الامارات اللي هم 26 و27 و28 تمام جدا سؤالك ايه بشوي؟ اه هو احنا ممكن يعني ممكن في سؤال يجي على على الجزء ده يا دكتور على م. بالنسبه لمثلا المؤتمرين دول لا احتمال ضعيف ان حاجه زي كده تيجي بس لو 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 لو, لو في محاضره الكلايمت تشينج يكون في احتمال لان كلايمت تشينج ليه علاقه بالكلوك بالكلوك بالكوب 27 لكن كايرو ووتر ويك غالبا مش هيجي عليه سؤال تمام جدا يا دكتور شكرا في حاجه ثانيه ولا ولا كم نكمل ها تمام جدا يا دكتور شكرا تمام جدا يلا يا شباب نسمع بقى الدكتوره تهاني اهو شايفين ايه دلوقتي يا شباب؟ مفيش شير سكرين يا دكتور لا طب ودلوقتي ها؟ لسه برضه ده كده جبنا ال ال التوبكس بتاعت اللكشر طب وكده؟ كده تمام؟ بصوا بقى احنا هنسمع آه. الدكتور تاني وبعدين يعني انا قلت لكم انه يو هاف ذا رايت اف يو اف يو لايك تو انتربت اني تايم طبعا اف يو اف يو دونت انتربت هيبقى احسن عشان الفلو بتاع الانفورميشن لكن اي دونت مايند لو في حاجه خطيره جدا جدا او واي دونت يو تيك نوت وانا حابه بسمع معاكم في الاخر نجاوب على الاسئله خلاص اوكي يا شباب اتفضل ان شاء الله شكرا لحضراتكم ميرسي جدا جدا اوكي اي اي بين انفورم ذات ذا ليكشر ويل بي ان انجلش سو اي ام سويتشنج تو انجلش اند بليز بليز فيل فري تو انتربت مي وان ايفر يو وونت اف يو وونت تو اسك تو كومنت ويز ان ذا برزنتيشن اور ات ذا اند ذس از اول يورز اوكي So uh, now we are going to uh, take an overview on uh, the water situation in Egypt and then uh, the water situation in the Nile Basin because um, actually it's very important for all of us to, to understand uh, the cooperation, spe specifically the technical cooperation between Egypt and the Nile Basin countries. And in order to do this, we have to understand first the hydrology of the basin. Um, and within our presentation also, we will uh, try to uh, shed some uh, light on a project that uh, maybe you, you heard a lot uh, on uh, something called the establishment of a navigation line between Lake Victoria and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this is a project that I have to honor to uh, to uh, to be the director, and uh, we will talk a little bit also about the bilateral cooperation between Egypt and the Nile Basin countries. Uh, well, uh, to start, uh, we have to understand. I think that we all know, but let's uh, emphasize it again that Egypt is among uh, the the driest countries in the world. As you see in the maps, uh, you, you find that uh, Egypt is almost desert, except uh, Dr. Tahani, the... we cannot see the map. Can you go to open share tray, which is the Mustatil Murabba, which is the same thing? You cannot see the map because I already, yes. you share, I, I did share the screen. Okay. Can you share it again? Okay, sure. Give me a second, please. Okay. I'm not very familiar with Teams. Uh, OK. 
Can you see it now? Uh, we will wait. It may take some time. We cannot see the screen yet. And now I think it's coming now, but but yeah, still we cannot see the screen. But uh, there is some changes. Mm. Can you can you repeat the share again? Well, the share is over. Andy. Ah, it is shared. I think. Oh, you opened Teams, right? أفندم؟ حضرتك فتحة تيمز باين عندي اه اه انا فتحة تيمز اه تمام واتر سيتويشن ايجيب تمام اه يس اوكي ذا سكرين از 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 افيلبل ناو فور ايفري بودي فيري جود يا اوكي بات اي ويل ناو يو سي ات بيتر يس ذيس از فول سكرين جريت فوالا يلا اتس كومينج Yes. Okay. As you as you see in, in the maps, uh, uh, you see that uh, Egypt is almost desert except of the Nile Valley and the Delta. Uh, and in the upper uh, in the upper map, you can see also the rainfall in Egypt, and you find that uh, uh, the rainfall is almost uh, it's it's very mi minimal uh, at the coastal uh, areas. And it's uh, it is decreasing until reaching zero millimeters uh, in most of of the countries. So Egypt is among the driest countries in the world, and um, also Egypt depends uh, for more than 97 percent of uh, of their water resources of Egypt's water resources are coming from outside of the borders. This is something that we have to to keep in mind all the time. And this uh, explains the, the importance of cooperation with the Nile Basin countries. We'll elab elaborate on this later. Uh, we have a water shortage uh, gap between the users and the resources that uh, are about 21 billion cubic meters. Uh, only 3.5% uh, of the total land area uh, of Egypt is cultivated. Uh, and we have more than $10 billion uh, of the food gap that we uh, overcome uh, by uh, virtual water or by uh, uh, exporting, uh, importing uh, um, agricultural products from, uh, from outside. Uh, we import almost 60% of our food. And uh, the agricultural sector, which is um, employing uh, more than 31% of the labor force uh, and 49% of the uh, of the this labor force is the females, uh, and this explains the importance of agriculture, and this explains again the the how critical um, the water resources management uh, in Egypt uh, is important, and this is why uh, since early ages. The, the Egyptian farmer has done his homework very well by uh, having one of the oldest uh, irrigation networks uh, in the world. Uh, here we can see the, the water demand and the water resources in Egypt and the water balance. So you can find that uh, a total of 80.3 uh, billion cubic meters per year are in the demand while the resources do not exceed 60 billion cubic meter per year. So how do we overcome this gap? It is by uh, uh, recycling or uh, reuse uh, for agricultural uh, drainage water and also uh, by wastewater reuse. Uh, accordingly, uh, the reuse of water uh, increased the overall water use efficiency to more than 80% of uh, a percentage that is higher than 80%. Um, so by the water reuse, Egypt is recycling uh, more than uh, two times. Sometimes we it happens to reuse the water three times before disposing it uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. 
Uh, our challenges are many. Uh, I think that I, I don't need to, to share this with you because I, I think that you all know it. Uh, our internal uh, challenges uh, are water scarcity. Of course, we have aridity. Uh, the groundwater uh, is available, but it is uh, very deep groundwater, and e economically speaking, it is difficultly, very difficult to to uh, abstract uh, the Nubian sandstone aquifer water uh, because it is uh, really uh, very deep groundwater. Uh, of course, the population increase uh, increases, and uh, uh, the uh, increases and puts more pressure on water and food and energy. This is from the internal uh, perspective, but from the uh, external perspective also, we have uh, very uh, big challenges in climate change. Uh, as you know, uh, Egypt is subject to climate change. The Nile Delta specifically, we are uh, facing uh, sea level rise, uh, and this uh, sea level rise has its negative impact, uh, of course, on the groundwater salinity. Uh, we are also uh, subject to climate change from a different uh, aspect uh, because uh, there is a high uncertainty in uh, um, the Nile water resources, the Nile flow. Uh, some uh, scenarios uh, on uh, climate change uh, predict that there will be uh, uh, high flows, uh, high rains, and uh, subsequently uh, high flows in the future. Some other uh, climate models say that we will uh, face uh, droughts. Uh, accordingly, we are we have this challenge to to be ready for droughts and for uh, floods as well. Uh, we are depending very highly on uh, the water resources from out outside of the borders, which makes us very, very vulnerable to any uh, upstream uh, uh, projects that might have negative impact on our resources. And of course, uh, we are facing, and that I think that all of us um, are following now the the Grand Ethiopian uh, Renaissance Dam problem, and uh, this lack of coordination puts us in a very uh, critical situation. Uh, the main features of the Nile Basin, we have uh, uh, in the Nile Basin, the, the basin's area is about uh, 3 million square kilometers. Uh, the area of lakes is uh, 81,500 square kilometers. The area of swamps uh, is uh, 70,000 square kilometer. Uh, the length of the Nile is uh, more than uh, 6,700 kilometers. The length of the rivers and tributaries, so we, if we talk ab about the length of the, the rivers and tributaries of the Nile, we're talking about more than uh, 37,500 kilometers. And the main features uh, of the Nile Basin, the 11, the, the Nile is uh, shared by 11 riparian states uh, with more than 300 million people. Uh, they will be 600 uh, at 2025, which is tomorrow. Uh, although the Nile is uh, the longest river in the world, uh, unfortunately, when it comes to, to the river discharge, it is among the least. We talk about 84 billion uh, cubic meters uh, coming in uh, at Aswan. Um, we can call uh, the Nile as a very uh, complex, the Nile Basin is a very complex basin. Uh, and um, if we look at uh, those two maps, we can understand why uh, this complexity. Uh, on the left-hand side, when you see the, the Nile Basin map and we see the average annual rainfall, we find that there is a big discrepancy and it's a big variability in the, the rainfall. While uh, Egypt and, and Sudan are almost uh, dry with almost no rainfall, we find that uh, uh, the Blue Nile area in uh, the Ethiopian highlands and the uh, equatorial uh, lakes plateau are uh, very uh, rainy. Uh, 
So this uh, puts different uh, interests in the in the river. Um, while we need the river for uh, agriculture and for the livelihood of, of the people, uh, the focus on this river in the downstream is more on how hydropower development and how the hydropower production. Uh, and this is one of, of the important factors of, of complexity of the Nile Basin. Uh, at the right, ha right hand side, we can see also the available uh, runoff. Uh, we see that uh, there is uh, there are some uh, uh, swampy areas, and uh, the runoff uh, is is high in uh, in the Nile Basin in uh, Egypt. While uh, we are mainly focusing on the rain in the the Ethiopian plateau and the Equatorial Lakes plateau as well. Another uh, factor of our complexity is uh, a term called the dependency ratio. This uh, term is uh, uh, identified by the FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, as being the part of the total renewable water resources originating outside of the country. So it is the percentage of the external renewable uh, water resources over the total renewable water resources. In short, it explains how much you depend on water from outside of your borders. And uh, when you compare the, the Nile Basin countries, we find that uh, Egypt has the highest uh, dependency ratio, with 97% uh, of its water coming from outside of the basin. Uh, why, for example, we find in a country like Ethiopia or Rwanda with 0%, which means that they are controlling their own resources. They don't depend on water resources from outside of their borders. And here, uh, again, it explains the, the, the complexity of the basin because we are not uh, all at the same page with regards to the dependency ratio. Uh, this map explains the three uh, main plateaus of the Nile Basin. The Ethiopian plateau, where the Blue Nile uh, comes. Uh, the Equatorial Lakes plateau uh, in the Lake Victoria and the Equatorial Lakes. And the Bahr el-Ghazal plateau. Um, in this table, we find uh, that uh, it explains a little bit the water situation in the Nile Basin as well. So uh, uh, in the Equatorial Lakes, for example, uh, it receives the mean annual rainfall volume of about 527 billion cubic meters. From Bahr el Ghazal, we receive 544 billion cubic meters. And from the Ethiopian plateau, 1,076 billion cubic meters. The mean annual runoff volume at the source, so at the equatorial plateau, while the mean annual runoff volume is 527, only 15 billion cubic meters are uh, flowing in the, in the Nile. In Bahr el Ghazal, zero. So none of the Bahr el Ghazal uh, rainfall volume flows in the Nile. It's all uh, in the swampy areas in the Sud region. Uh, and the in the Ethiopian plateau, out of the 1,076 billion cubic meters that fall on the Ethiopian plateau, only 79.5 billion cubic meters are flowing uh, uh, outside of the Ethiopian plateau. This is at the source of the, the basin. Uh, when we come and uh, capture all of this water at Aswan, we find that the contribution of the Equatorial Lakes Plateau uh, in the Nile uh, arriving at Aswan is only 13.5 billion cubic meters. Nothing comes from Bahr el Ghazal and uh, from the Ethiopian Plateau 70.5, which makes that out of the 2,147 billion cubic meter of rainfall falling on the Nile Basin, only 84 billion cubic meter arrives at Aswan.
this explains that the losses that uh, the um, the percentage of losses compared to the rainfall is almost uh, 96 uh, percent. It means that only 5 percent of the Nile water that falls, the rainfalls that falls on the Nile Basin arrive at Aswan. This is uh, an indicator that uh, there is a big need for um, good management of the water resources in the basin. This is a schematic um, because we are a little bit late. I don't, uh, I will uh, uh, keep it for later if we have time, but this schematic explains uh, all the, the trajectory of the water until it arrives at Aswan. So from the Lake Victoria, from Lake Albert, from the Sud areas, and we find that only 84 billion cubic meters arrive at Aswan. Here we have to talk a little bit about the green water and the blue water because um, from what you have uh, seen and from, from what I have uh, said to you earlier that um, the, the blue water uh, is the blue, the water that is flowing in the, the river while the green water is the water that is uh, coming from the rain. So from the schematic, you see that uh, the rainfall, when it falls, it uh, makes a coverage of uh, greens and, um, and uh, food for livestock. And all of this is unfortunately not counted. All what is counted and what uh, is always said uh, in, in the media uh, is that uh, Egypt takes the Nile, the line share of, of the Nile. While uh, in what I have explained to you earlier, that uh, Egypt takes only 5% of the water that comes and all the rest of the rainfall is is lost. Actually, it's not lost because it is uh, on the greens and also infiltrated in the groundwater. Uh, here are some definitions of the green and blue and gray water. Uh, the green water is the rainwater directly used and evaporated by non-irrigated agriculture, while the blue water, which is the water that is flowing in the, the river, it's the source of supply. It is equivalent to the natural water resources, whether it is surface and or ground. Unfortunately, the groundwater in the Nile Basin is not counted, uh, and it is not uh, uh, explained and used and exploited the way it should be. Uh, and the grey water, it is the water required to dilute uh, polluted from returns flow. Uh, this uh, slide um, explains a little bit uh, how the green water is consumed in, in the Nile Basin. Of course, in uh, the forests, uh, in the national parks, uh, and in the greenery, uh, all of this is green water. It is not counted while it is a source of income and it is a, a very important economic source for the Nile Basin. Uh, now, after this uh, uh, introduction to uh, the situation of, of the water resources in the Nile Basin, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the evolution of regional and technical cooperation in the Nile Basin. Uh, the technical cooperation started by a project called Hydromet, followed by the Teco Nile, the Nile Basin Initi Initiative, and uh, uh, at the end, the VicMed project on which we will concentrate. Uh, the HydroMed project, like the, the title of the project, uh, is a hydrometeorological survey of the catchments of Lakes Victoria, Kyoga, and Albert. And this project was assisted by two UN agencies the participating countries and governments of Rwanda, Burundi, Burundi, Congo, requested to include Lake Victoria catchment within Rwanda and Burundi and Lake Albert in Congo. Ethiopia joined this project as an observer in 1971. 
the main uh, uh, outputs of this project were, were hydrometeorological data, uh, ground and hydrographic survey, and some capacity building activities. Uh, upper Nile Basin mathematical uh, model was uh, um, uh, elaborated and it was consisting of rainfall runoff uh, and lakes regulation and uh, routing modules and water quality mathematical model for the lakes. This uh, hydromet project uh, was from 1967 to 1992. The Hydromet project was followed by the Teco Nile. The Teco Nile is, uh, uh, yeah, it's a consortium uh, of, uh, it's a committee uh, of uh, technical and um, also uh, academia. Uh, in December 1992, the water ministers of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Egypt, Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda met in Kampala, and they agreed to establish a technical cooperation committee for the promotion of development and environmental protection of the Nile Basin. They first met in 1993, and uh, the World Bank was the coordinator with the UNDP and SIDA, and they composed something called the Nile team. And we talked the, about the Nile team later because the Nile team was the first uh, nuclear to the uh, Nile Basin uh, initiative. Uh, we had also uh, the Nile 2002 conference series. Uh, they were sessions uh, that uh, has for obje objective to facilitate the exchange of views over the Nile Basin issues and assist policymakers to explore possibilities of basin-wide cooperation on the development and management of Nile resources. This forum brought together scholars and technical experts uh, in the Nile issues, and they had uh, nine conferences uh, starting from 1993 to 2002. Uh, each conference was held in one of the Nile Basin countries. And then came the Nile Basin Initiative, the Nile Basin Initiative starting from 1999. Uh, the Nile Basin Initiative had uh, a slogan uh, or uh, a shared vision, which is to achieve sustainable socioeconomic development through the equitable utilization of and the benefit from the common Nile Basin water resources. And uh, the Nile Basin Initiative uh, actually uh, is ongoing until now, and I'll talk ab about it with, with more details because the Nile Basin Initiative started with a cluster of uh, projects. Uh, so some projects called the Shared Vision Projects, those were thematic projects. There were uh, projects to pave the ground for uh, creating the enabling environment for cooperation. Those projects uh, were, were on applied training, uh, on confidence building, on benefit sharing. There were thematic projects. And also they have two other clusters of projects, which were the subsidiary action project, projects. The subsidiary action projects were projects on the ground. So uh, they were uh, studies uh, in the field of uh, hydropower uh, production, in the field of agriculture, in the field of uh, cascade dams and uh, uh, joint multipurpose projects in order to prepare for tangible projects to be implemented in the Nile Basin. Those projects uh, were uh, uh, in the two equatorial lakes and uh, uh, Eastern Nile uh, countries. Um, actually, although Egypt was the main founder of the Nile Basin Initiative, we found some um, difficulty to, to continue our um, uh, cooperation in under the umbrella of the Nile Basin Initiative. And this is why, because um, uh, there was um, uh, an agreement 
that was under preparation under the, the umbrella of the Nile Council of Ministers. This agreement called the Cooperative Framework Agreement. And uh, this Cooperative Framework Agreement was the agreement that should be signed by all the Nile Basin countries in order to change the Nile Basin Initiative from an initiative to a commission and to give it um, a legal uh, aspect. Within the negotiations on the cooperative framework agreement, Egypt had some concerns of the agreement itself. Uh, those concerns was uh, with regards to uh, the water security. Uh, they were also with regards to the prior notification, which is actually we are facing now, uh, it should be uh, very well elaborated that before constructing a project on the Nile, it, you have to notify your neighbors and you have to give them all the necessary studies and all the necessary um, information about the project and to discuss together how to coordinate this project in order to be a win-win project without any uh, negative impact on uh, the riparian countries. Unfortunately, uh, those articles in the cooperative framework agreement were not uh, agreed uh, by Egypt. And while we were negotiating these articles, some of the Nile Basin countries decided to uh, sign this agreement. Uh, the status quo now is that six countries have signed the agreement and four countries have ratified the agreement in their parliaments. Uh, accordingly, Egypt uh, had to suspend its uh, participation uh, in the Nile Basin Initiative. Uh, although we are uh, suspending now or we are freezing our participation in the Nile Basin Initiative, but this didn't ever stop our cooperation with all the Nile Basin countries, whether on the regional level or on the bilateral level. And this was what we're going to explain now. Um, at the regional aspect, we have uh, a, a project that we uh, will talk about. And I think that in the media, if you a search for the establishment of a navigation line between Lake Victoria and the Mediterranean Sea, or in Arabic, Rabt al Mashru'a, Rabt al Milahi, between Buhayr al Victoria and Bahr al Mutawasit, you will find uh, many news and you will find uh, many articles. Well, uh, the Vic Med project is a, a presidential infrastructure uh, championing initiative, PC. Uh, project and let me explain a little bit what is the uh, PC project. Under the African Union, we have something called the Presidential Infrastructure Championing Initiative. This initiative is an initiative led by the heads of states, and uh, they are concerned of the projects, some infrastructure, regional projects led by the heads of states of Africa. We talk about almost 10 projects. Some of them are on uh, roads, some of them are on railways, some others are on um, fiber optics, and each one of these projects is a regional project, and it is led by one of the heads of state of African uh, countries. And uh, the VicMed project is led by Egypt, is championed by Egypt, and by uh, His Excellency, uh, the President Abdel Fattah Um Egypt and MPAD uh, coordinated uh, this project with the COMESA. COMESA stands for the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa. And this is what they called the Regional Economic Commission. So this regional project has uh, a strategic objective to achieve socioeconomic integration and cohesion, uh, to achieve a sustainable integrated multimodal transport system, 
to enhance trade and tourism and to reduce poverty among the Nile Basin footprint countries. The VicMed project expected benefit is to connect uh, footprint countries via a relative low cost natural transport route that is safe, secure, energy efficient, and capable of moving various types and volume of goods uh, and cargo. Because as you know, the, the river transport is one of the most friendly um, ways of transport uh, and uh, environmental friendly, of course. Uh, to provide also effective support and facilitation for trade and tourism among footprint countries and the rest of the world, specifically for uh, landlocked countries. To provide opportunities for landlocked countries and to reinforce region's position with the global economic system and to allow more cooperation and regional integration in all aspects. Um, as you may know that uh, under the African Union now, there is a concept called the uh, economic um, uh, integrated corridor approach. So Africa is now focusing and the African Union is focusing very much on uh, uh, development corridors and integrated corridor approach, which is using a road or a railway or a river as a connector between all the countries uh, involved and as um, a development corridor for uh, um, uh, trading, for tourism, uh, and for all aspects of uh, coordination and cooperation between whether the riparian countries when it comes to a river or a uh, road or a railway. Our project here is uh, under something called the multimodal transport. We will explain it later. Uh, here we, we can uh, maybe focus more on uh, the navigation, we find that uh, the Nile now is not navigable all the way. Egypt, of course, in Egypt, the Nile is navigable uh, from source to mouth, but not this not the case in all the, the areas or in all the, the, the Nile basin. Uh, and this is why, first of all, because some uh, topographic uh, 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 aspects and also uh, the presence of some uh, uh, infrastructure uh, projects that uh, that are blocking uh, the way. So, um, sorry, and here we can see also if we focus a little bit uh, on the historic inland water transport and the main uh, the main areas which are navigable you will see them in blue in uh, light blue the navigable areas in the nile basin the rest of of the areas the 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 thin and deep blue uh, uh, lines are uh, the non navigable parts of of the Nile. I think we can skip the historical background. It will not, not be very much interesting uh, for you. This is how the project came into life. Uh, but let's focus on the project components. Actually, uh, this project components will be a navigation route, an inland waterways, uh, ports and inland water uh, intermodal ports, navigation works and structures like dredging, locks and bridges, of course, in order to make it navigable all the way, uh, navigation fleets, transport operators, uh, capacity building centers, and uh, this will all uh, be managed by agreements and legal, of course. The VicMat path is um, uh, um, divided into five reaches, as you see in the map. 
The first reach is uh, Lake Victoria and the Victoria Nile in Uganda. The second reach is uh, the Great Lakes um, uh, region, Burundi, Rwanda, DRC, and Uganda. The third is the Arbel Albert Nile until Malakal. The fourth reach is in the White Nile and the main Nile in South Sudan and Sudan. And the fifth reach is in the Egyptian Nile. What are the main phases of this project? Because this project is actually what we call a long-term project. We, you talk about the navigability of the Nile. So it, it cannot be a very short-term project uh, that is ended in one or two years. The pre-feasibility study of this project started in 2014-2015. The feasibility study has many phases. We have uh, uh, completed already the first phase from 2015 to 2019. The second phase of the feasibility study, and we will uh, elaborate on it later, is uh, divided into two parts. The first part started, should start from 2019, but until now, actually, it is in the preparation. Uh, the feasibility study phase two, part two, uh, uh, is to be determined when the feasibility study part one, uh, part two uh, is fi finished. And then will come the design and implementation phase. In the pre-feasibility study, ah, uh, pardon. In the pre-feasibility study, uh, it was completed in May 2015 and it was endorsed in December 2017 during uh, one of the regional steering committee uh, meetings. In this feasibility study, um, actually at that time, there was no, there was no uh, fund for this project uh, by any of the, uh, the regional or international uh, funding agencies. And this is why Egypt as a leader and the champion of this project took the initiative to um, uh, uh, make uh, or uh, undertake the feasibility study uh, of this project. And uh, it ended up by five alternatives uh, variating between navigation and multimodal transport. Uh, these alternatives are just uh, maps for elaboration later in the feasibility study. The VIGMAT project management unit was uh, established and the regional steering committee uh, and national committee was established as well. A regional steering committee is a committee uh, formed by uh, experts, high level experts from the water sector and from the transport sector from each of the Nile Basin countries. Uh, within uh, the pre-feasibility study also, uh, there, were, uh, there were promotional visits to footprint countries in order to promote for this project. They, were, they went to DRC, Tanzania, Rwanda, Kenya, South Sudan, Sudan, and Uganda. Uh, these are the alternatives uh, of the, the project, as you see here in blue. This alternative, we talk about a complete navigable uh, Nile from source to mouth. And in green, you will find the railways and the roads. So uh, it's about the, uh, this alternative was about um, uh, rehabilitating the, the Nile, uh, all the Nile to make it navigable all the way and also to uh, rehabilitate the roads and rails in the Equatorial Lakes Plateau. All, all those alternatives actually are between uh, making uh, uh, some uh, shortcuts or some, uh, how you say, uh, um, channels to, to shorten the trajectory or to uh, combine between uh, the uh, navigation and the rail and uh, and road uh, uh, and road uh, um, transport, which is the the multimodal transport. 
so those are the alternative to be elaborated later uh, from in the feasibility study. Uh, these are some photos of the missions uh, to the, the, the Nile Basin countries uh, during the pre-feasibility study phase. Uh, these are the uh, Nile Basin countries. Of course, uh, like you have seen in the map, uh, first of all, it was the, the, the reach from uh, uh, the Lake Victoria to Mediterranean Sea, so the blue uh, pathway of the Nile crossing um, Sudan, Uganda, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, and Egypt. But uh, all the Nile Basin countries uh, requested to join this uh, project. Ethiopia requested officially to join the project through the Barrow River. Kenya in Lake Victoria and Tanzania, of course. Uh, Rwanda from the, uh, the Ruvubu, the Rwanda from uh, DRC from the Semeliki, uh, Burundi from the Ruvubu, and Rwanda uh, from uh, also its, uh, its tributaries. So now we have on the main uh, trajectory, Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, and Uganda, and we have all the Nile Basin countries um, expressing their interest to join this project through the tributaries that are passing their, uh, their countries as well. This is how the project is coordinated. We have here uh, a steering committee, uh, which is composed of uh, high level experts from uh, the water sector and from the uh, navigation, the, navigation or the transport sector in all the Nile Basin countries. Um, we have uh, Egypt as a champion, so we have uh, our uh, focal point and the project management unit. We are coordinating with COMESA as a regional economic commission with the African Development Bank because the African Development Bank provided uh, fund later on for the first phase of the feasibility study. And in each of the countries, we have a, a national technical commission or a technical committee. In each of the, the countries and specifically in Egypt. And in this technical committee, we have all the parties involved in the water sector, not only water and transport, but also electricity, trades, um, finance, all the, the country's uh, uh, representatives are represented in this uh, Egypt National Technical Committee. So this is uh, the, the flow diagram of our uh, project. The feasibility study phase one uh, was funded by the African uh, Development Bank. It started in um, uh, 2015 and it ended in July 2019 with a fund of 650,000 US dollars and the achievement were as follows. Uh, we had uh, developed an institutional and legal framework and the training need uh, assessment uh, report. Uh, it was completed and approved by all the countries in 2018. Uh, we prepared also uh, the terms of reference uh, for the second phase of feasibility study. We uh, undertook uh, two capacity building uh, programs uh, at the regional level and four steering committee meetings at the regional level as well. All these activities have been already finished and uh, they were achieved uh, with more than 80% of the assigned resources. These are the countries that, uh, of course, uh, the, it was uh, an international consultancy firm that uh, had um, made the work and it was also uh, supervised, revised and uh, endorsed by all the countries. Uh, we can see here some photos of the consultant with uh, the countries during the visits and this is the table 
in which the country, the consultant made his study visit in order to prepare the legal and institutional framework and also in order to prepare uh, the training needs assessment for uh, all the Nile Basin countries. Um, under the capacity building uh, component, we uh, undertook a training program on the introduction of inland water navigation, starting from February uh, 5th to 16th uh, in 2017. Um, and they also uh, participated in two field visits. Uh, it was under the sponsor, un, under the, the control of the Regional Institute for River Transport and the Arab Academy uh, for Science, Technology and Maritime, the Nile Research Institute and the Hydraulic Research Institute. And it was a very successful uh, capacity building program. These are some photos of uh, this training that was held uh, and, uh, in 2017. Uh, and this is uh, in the closing uh, ceremony. Another uh, training was held in uh, Suez Canal um, uh, Authority. Uh, it was in uh, Inland Water Transport, Challenges and Opportunities. It was held in 2019 in Smileya, and it was regional one, one as well, with two participants from each footprint country. And um, the training was implemented by the Suez Canal Authority to, re to uh, share the unique experience of Suez Canal Authority to dig the new uh, Suez Canal uh, and um, as also a, a vein or a, um, vein for development uh, to be used. These are some photos of the, the trainees uh, and uh, during also a trip in the Suez Canal and the, 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 the closing ceremony as well. Uh, now, uh, one of the outcome uh, of this phase was to propose an institutional setup for the VicMed project. Why? Because uh, we are talking about elaborating uh, and studying the navigability of the Nile, and to try to make um, to make it as a, a, a huge development cluster of projects, not only a transport project or uh, a water project, but it's a, a, a development corridor, like we have said, uh, including um, trading, including tourism, including many aspects of economic development. So uh, this is an, the institutional setup that has been agreed upon. We talk about two, two uh, units uh, for the operation of this project. Uh, the VicMed op operational main unit, which will um, represent the executive secretariat of the VicMed project, it will be uh, located in Egypt. Uh, the responsibility of the OMU is to prepare and organize uh, the policy and strategic options um, to follow up the design, the implementation, and the operation costs the operations uh, options and to address the challenges. And it will include uh, technical, legal, financial and environmental technicians. For the connection unit as well, which is in the, uh, in the branches, uh, we have an operational connection. We will have, because this is in the future, this is proposed and it hasn't been implemented yet an operational uh, connection unit uh, and uh, the operational connection unit will be in Uganda and Uganda will play a pivoting role in that uh, project because it will be part of the OMU and also part of the OCU. On top of the, the two uh, units, we will have the technical advisory committee and this technical advisory committee is another name of the, the actual steering committee of the project. 
this technical advisory committee will be reporting to a council of ministers and the council of ministers will report to the summit of heads of states under the, the, the African Union and all of this will be coordinated by COMESA and by NEPAL. This is the proposed institutional setup that has been agreed upon among all the Nile Basin countries. This is uh, almost, we can say, the roadmap of uh, the project. Um, once we have uh, fund for the project, because now uh, we are in the um, phase of seeking fund for the project. And uh, fortunately that uh, uh, last month uh, during the Cairo Water Week, actually at the end of October during the Cairo Water Week, uh, among our activities, we made a donors round table. We uh, held a donors round table with the, all the funding agencies uh, at the regional at international level were invited to the donors round table in order to seek for fund for the upcoming phase of the project. Um, the African Development Bank uh, committed itself with two uh, million US dollars to start the uh, second phase of the feasibility study uh, of the, the VicMed project. What is going to, to happen within this phase, but it will go on the way with the availability of funds because the, the predicted fund for the pre-feasibility study is 11.7 million US dollars. So what's available now or what will be available now will be only 2 million US dollars. And this is why we cannot make all the activities at once, but we will have to schedule these activities um, along with the possibility of uh, uh, finding fund, uh, regional of, or international fund. And let me explain to you why we are not funding this project by ourselves. This is very political and you have to, to, to understand it. When you talk about regional project led by Egypt or championed by Egypt, it is better to, to, to find always a neutral agency to fund it and a neutral agency to coordinate it. In order not to say that Egypt is manipulating this, uh, this project or is not championing, but is trying to manipulate the project. This is very important. So this is why we are seeking for fund from exterior partners, because I can see it coming. And why don't we fund this project since it is an important project? So I'm replying to you in advance. Uh, this is the roadmap. It will be starting by uh, some data collection activities. Uh, of course, uh, because this is the way it, sh it should be, we have to, to have a, a strategic environmental assessment and it should include stakeholder consultations. Uh, a transport economic study have also to be uh, done and then to present all of these studies to make the technical feasibility study including multi-criteria and cost-benefit analysis for the five alternatives that have been presented. And maybe if there are other alternatives that also need to be uh, presented on the table, whether by the consultancy firm that will be responsible or by the countries themselves. Then we will have many stakeholder consultation uh, workshops uh, and uh, all of this will result to have an optimal alternative for this, uh, this project. And this optimal alternative will be studied more thoroughly uh, with uh, an ESEIA, uh, Environmental Social uh, Impact Assessment, uh, and uh, followed by a detailed uh, design study terms of reference. And the the following phase will be detailed design studies and then uh, the tender and the, the implementation. So as, as I have told you, it's a very, very long uh, term project. It's not uh, maybe um, 
uh, you will work on this project and maybe even you will be high consultants of this project, inshallah. So this is a schematic of the roadmap again, uh, the strategic uh, alternatives in the pre-feasibility study. Uh, we will undertake a strategic environmental assessment, transport economic study, and technical feasibility study. A multi-criteria analysis and cost-benefit analysis in order to select the uh, best alternative uh, and discussions and decision making. Um, as I have told you, the estimated cost of this phase is 11.7 million US dollars, uh, 1 million for the establishment of the two units, 7.5 million for the technical studies, and uh, 3.2 uh, as operational cost. The ex expected duration of this phase, the upcoming phase, while once it starts, it will be 38 months. The second phase of uh, part uh, phase two, part two, is the conducted detailed strategic environmental and social assessment uh, of the selected scenario. Uh, the estimated cost is six million US dollars, and the uh, time required will be about 20 months. Uh, these are some photos. I'll not be very. Uh, I'll not. Uh, I'll go through them very quickly. I was just wanted to share with you that since the start of the project is to, in 2015, many activities uh, and uh, committee meetings have been done at the regional level in order to promote for this project and to push it uh, forward. We uh, all the decisions are taken among all the Ripanier countries. We can see here the COMESA, the World Bank representatives, uh, the African Union representative, all of them are present and pushing forward this uh, project. Uh, this is in one of the steering committee meetings. This is also in one of the steering committee meetings. Uh, we have also promoted for the, the project in many, many conferences, like uh, the Third Water uh, Forum, Mediterranean Water Forum. In the, all the Cairo Water Weeks, of course, we have the a presentation of uh, the VicMed project, last of which was uh, this Cairo Water Week. Uh, this is also... Uh, um, uh, some uh, meetings uh, for the PICI meetings, and His Excellency Mohammed Abdelati is in one of the PC meetings in Cape Town in 2019, before we turn to virtual everything. Uh, the project management unit uh, has also vi visited Uganda in order to uh, take a look at the proposed uh, unit uh, the proposed building for the, the OCU in Uganda. Uh, this is uh, also one of the PICI meeting. It was in October 2019 during the Cairo Water Week in Cairo. And you can see at the right hand side the, the NEPAD and uh, at the left hand side the African Union uh, representative. Uh, this table um, summarizes the fund overview of this uh, project. The pre-feasibility, as I have said, told you, it was uh, from uh, funded by Egypt uh, with uh, half a million US dollars. Uh, the feasibility study phase one by the African Development Bank. The feasibility study phase two, part one, the 11.7, uh, not guaranteed yet. Only two uh, million have been committed, but no agreement have been signed until now, wishfully uh, after Christmas uh, vacation in 2022, early 2022. I hope that we can sign an agreement on this. The second part is 6 million US dollars, not guaranteed as well. The detailed design and the implementation, we talk about billions of US dollars, of course, but uh, the, the, the figure is not now specified because it will be a build up on uh, the feasibility phase and the detailed design, of course. Uh, now we talked about the regional cooperation. We're, uh, we're going to talk very briefly about the bilateral cooperation between Egypt and the Nile Basin countries, uh, because Egypt is not only uh, keen of uh, cooperating with the, uh, the Nile Basin countries 
at the regional level, we are also very keen to cooperate at the bilateral level, which means that between Egypt and each of the Nile Basin countries. Uh, the bilateral cooperation is one of the main pillars of Egypt's national water policy. It supports and consolidates the relations between Egypt and the Nile Basin countries. Although we have this concern of the Nile Basin initiative, but still the cooperation at the bilateral uh, and the regional level are continuing at its best. Uh, if you follow the news, our uh, minister, the Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation, have just uh, left uh, Uganda for a study visit where he inaugurated a new phase in uh, a project uh, called the Aquatic Weed Control. We will talk about it now. And uh, also, uh, this co bilateral cooperation in, is important to build uh, trust and confidence and to promote the cooperation and benefit sharing concepts between Egypt and the Nile Basin. Um, the bilateral cooperation is accommodated through many uh, Egyptian authorities. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, specifically the Egyptian Agency of Partnership for Development, uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and the Irrigation, and some other ministries and agencies, that the Ministry of Trade, industry, transport, health, electricity, etc. But here in our presentation, we will focus about on the uh, bilateral cooperation between Egypt and uh, the Nile Basin countries uh, through the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation. What are the areas uh, of, of this cooperation? Uh, uh, to exchange experience, uh, to avail the development projects in remote areas uh, in order to support our brothers and sisters in uh, the Nile Basin country, uh, countries, to uh, complement uh, the national development plans in Nile Basin countries, and to contribute to the sustainable development goals, uh, specifically SDG 6 on uh, clean water and sanitation in the Nile Basin countries. The main areas uh, are on aquatic weeds uh, control, uh, rainwater harvesting dams, and let me explain to you what are the rainwater harvesting dams. Like you see here in the in this uh, picture, it's like a hole to collect the rain coming uh, to a specific area instead of uh, uh, making damages to collect these rains in order to serve people and livestock uh, for irrigation and for uh, livestock beverage as well. Uh, to the dig uh, groundwater wells, uh, we also have cooperation projects in flood mitigation, construction of landing sites and of hydrological stations, uh, to instit uh, institutional strengthening and capacity building, um, physics exchange and applied research. So the cooperation is almost in all technical aspects. How does this cooperation take place? It starts by an idea when uh, any of the Nile Basin countries, and let me tell you that it's not only specific on the Nile Basin countries, uh, the Ministry of Water Resources also has uh, cooperation um, uh, agreements and the cooperation protocols with many other African and Arab and European countries as well. Uh, it starts by receiving uh, an idea, uh, an official letter uh, from the Nile Basin country with the requirements and needs. Then it is followed by uh, data collection and field visits to the country uh, in order to specify what is the project's scope of work. Then uh, there is a technical committee from both countries, a technical committee from the Ministry of Water Resources in Egypt and another one from the, um, uh, the other country, which has uh, asked for the, the cooperation. Uh, both committees uh, meet together 
and they start uh, the formulation of an agreement or a protocol or of uh, a memorandum of understanding and an action plan. And then the implementation of the project starts. So this is the, the roadmap or this is the procedures uh, from the idea until we reach the implementation of the project. Uh, with the South Sudan, uh, we had uh, three memorandums of understanding in 2006, 2011, and 2014. Uh, the first one uh, on technical cooperation and water resources management. The second one of also, and the third one as well. So these are uh, memorandums of understanding and agreements that are renewed uh, in on each period. And uh, these are some photos of the activities uh, under this uh, uh, cooperation. Um, here we can see the before and after the, the cleaning of the water channels in Bahr al Ghazal Basin in order to provide reliable navigation routes along uh, the year. So we can find that the, the aquatic weeds are blocking the pathway of water. And we can see afterwards when the, 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 the aquatic weeds uh, have been uh, uh, taken away from the, uh, the, the waterway. Uh, here it's also the cleaning uh, of water channels in uh, Bahr al Ghazal. We can see before it's totally blocked with mud, and afterwards, when the water is flowing in the in the water flow, uh, it's also here we they are making some uh, innovation and really rehabil rehabilitation of landing sites in Wau. Uh, and in uh, Kwajok in uh, South Sudan in 2019. Uh, also uh, drilling and equipping groundwater wells uh, to serve the clean drinking water for the communities in South Sudan. Six groundwater stations uh, were finished in Juba. Uh, the rehabilitation and maintenance of the main hydrological stations uh, five were completed and one is ongoing to provide hydrological data for development project in South Sudan. And you can see here our technical staff with the Sudanese, the South Sudanese technical staff in a field visit. Uh, on Bahre Gabal in South Sudan, we have also re rehabilitation of the Mongala station and the Nimeri station. Uh, the construction of the WOW pump station to serve clean drinking water for communities and to use uh, modern technology for providing clean water. And it consists of uh, pump station, elevated tank and water yards. <clears throat> the six uh, groundwater wells also are ongoing. Other six groundwater wells are ongoing. Uh, in South Sudan, we have uh, two rainwater harvesting dams in Tanj and uh, Gogarial to serve clean water for communities and uh, livestock. Uh, of course, on the pol political level, many uh, exchange visits have been uh, taken uh, both sides. Uh, our minister there, their minister, we're here in uh, the Cairo Water Week uh, lately, and uh, between uh, the, the minister and the prime minister in Egypt as well. With Uganda, Uganda is one of the countries that has very big uh, uh, cooperation uh, project, which is the Aquatic Weed Control Projects and other projects as well in the technical cooperation. Uh, and the integrated flood management in Kasisi district. I feel that we are approaching the end of our uh, uh, time. So please, Dr. Ali, tell me, should I move fast or uh, we end here to give some time? I, um, I, I suggest that you give the students some time to ask you uh, because they may have some other commitments after the end of the lecture. Yes, yes. So maybe I will stop at that end and 
just to say that there is uh, this aquatic weed control project is one of the most important ones uh, and many other uh, bilateral projects are ongoing between Egypt and the Nile Basin countries. Uh, so by this, I'll stop sharing uh, uh, my screen and uh, back to you, Dr. Ali. Now we open the floor for the students to ask you. ايه <تصفيق> من خلال الفيديو اللي موجود على اليوتيوب بس انا بسال لو في حد فيكم عنده اي استفسارات او كومنت قبل ما نكلوز السيشن دي اذا ما كانش عندكم اي كومنت او كويستشنز فاحنا على موعد ان شاء الله الاسبوع القادم في الميعاد المضبوط بتاعنا لان الامرجنسي اللي كانت عندي الاسبوع ده ويل نوت ريبيت نيكست ويك ونتقابل بإذن الله الساعة عشرة يوم الاثنين الجاي تمام يا شباب؟ آه. شكرا جزيلا يا شباب لو ما حدش عنده أسئلة we can end the meeting now أيوة تفضل معلش أنا آسف بس هو في أسئلة للمحاضرة دي آه طبعا يعني قصدك أبعت لك أنا أسئلة عن المحاضرة دي حاضر حاضر هعمل الحكاية دي شكرا خلاص تمام يا شباب انا اي ويل سند يعني كويستشنز سامبل كويستشنز عن المحاضره دي ونشوفكم الاسبوع الجاي ان شاء الله uh, يوم الاثنين السلام عليكم